more beautiful than Aphrodite, wiser than Athena, swifter than Hermes, and stronger than Hercules. Wonder Woman is one of the most iconic figures in comics and now in film. In this episode, I'll teach you how to build a god killer of a character. Gal Gadot, don't go anywhere or you'll miss this episode of Pop D&D. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Pop D&D, the show where I teach you how to take your favorite pop culture characters and turn them into D&D adventurers. In this episode, we're going to be building Wonder Woman, the princess of Themyscira, and the Amazon hero of the DC Universe. Wonder Woman made her comics debut in issue 8 of All-Star Comics in 1941. Created by William Moulton Marston, he envisioned her as a modern liberated woman, a hero who could save the day with love rather than brute force. The character of Diana Prince saw huge success in the 70s with Linda Carter's interpretation, and just last year made a killing in theaters with the release of Patty Jenkins' film starring Gal Gadot. Now I'm sure we're going to have a lot of people writing in letters on this one because this is going to be an extremely overpowered character. So I would suggest giving this out to a player who's just learning Dungeons and & Dragons and wants to give it a try to see what it's like, so this is very much a starting level hero. We're going to select Half-Elf as Wonder Woman's race because she's from two different worlds. She's both the Amazonian princess and she's the daughter of Zeus. So that's where we're going to blend that mortal and immortal combination. With a Half-Elf, you're going to get a lot of great attributes. So again, this is a great starting character to work with. We're going to get plus two to Charisma and we're going to get plus one to two different attributes. For the sake of this character, we're going to put those into Strength and Constitution. Next, we're going to select her class, and as a Swarm Protector of Good and Justice, there's no better role for Diana than as a Paladin. Paladins are your traditional knights, they're your heroes in shining armor, and in this case, we're going to be using that to fill out the different stats and attributes that fill in the character of Wonder Woman. So our highest starting attribute, the 15, we're going to put under Strength. With our plus one there, it's going to give us a 16 total. Our next, we're going to put under Charisma, because this is going to be one of the spell casting abilities that comes in later down the line when you build a Paladin. In this case, our 14 with a plus 2 for Charisma makes it another 16. Lastly, we're going to put our 13 under Constitution. A plus 1 gives us a total of 14. Again, this is going to be an extremely powerful character. A lot of people refer to this as a tank because it can take a lot of damage and deal a lot of damage. But we're going to balance this out by putting the lower stats under Dexterity, Intelligence, and Wisdom. For a Paladin, your HP is going to be 10 plus your Constitution modifier. Plus two in this case is going to give us an HP of 12. So again, you're going to take a lot of damage. You're going to be on the front lines fighting. Let's go ahead and equip Wonder Woman. And in this case, we're going to be giving her the Sword of Themyscira, a shield, and her Lasso of Truth. The Sword and Shield are both going to use Strength for her attack. So you're going to get a plus three when making your attack on either. And I went ahead and gave them both the same damage dice. But to clarify the difference between the two of them, you're going to use piercing damage with the sword and bludgeoning damage with the shield. Next, let's talk about the lasso. With it, you're going to be making your basic attack, and it's going to be a dexterity bonus because of the style in which you're using it. You'll get a plus one from your current dexterity, and instead of dealing damage, you're going to be grappling your opponent. Lastly, let's talk about the armor class, and for the sake of this, I went ahead and gave Wonder Woman a breastplate armor. She has all armor protections possible, so you can go as strong as you want with this, but for the sake of this and fitting with the character, we chose just the breastplate. So in calculating all of that protection, you're going to get 14 base AC for the breastplate, plus your dexterity modifier of 1, and let's go ahead and add two more because she has her shield to work with. This is going to give us a total protection of 17. Another way that's going to balance this out is her initiative modifier. Since we're using dexterity as that, we're only going to get a plus one. So odds are Wonder Woman is going to be going last in the combat round. Now one last thing that I did to perfect this character is I gave her two separate backgrounds. I gave her both the nobility background and the soldier background. So for the sake of building two different backgrounds, let's go ahead and split up the proficiencies. Nobles get proficiency in both history and persuasion, and soldiers get proficiency in athletics and intimidation. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the persuasion and the intimidation. The rest come in with the other proficiencies that a paladin can get. So here we're going to take back the athletics from soldier, and we're going to add in religion from choosing a paladin. Lastly, by choosing a half-elf, we get two more choices of proficiencies. In this case, we're going to choose history and insight. 
So there you have it, we've now built Wonder Woman, so you're ready to go ahead and defend truth, justice, the American way. That's it for this episode, thank you guys for watching, and let me know in the comments who your favorite Wonder Woman is. Also be sure to leave a comment letting me know who you would want to see in a future episode. I'll see you guys for another episode soon, and until then, roll initiative.